Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. I haven't washed my hair in about a week. That's my going average. I have long hair, it takes a long time to wash it. Riveting, riveting stuff. I only wash it about once a week. I have a whole process and I'm about there because I can smell it and girl, woo, she's ripe, woo, who is this lady? Who's that lady? It's a woman who needs to wash her hair. There's a lot of stuff happening in the world. I can't believe what the um, locals in Barcelona did to tourists. And it's kind of wild. The world is flipped upside down. We'll talk about that at the end of the podcast. One thing I saw that kind of threw me for a loop was when I was driving down Venice Boulevard. Venice Boulevard is a very long boulevard. A lot of boulevards here from the ocean into the city of Los Angeles are long. And it's kind of nice to drive straight down. You see all the sights, see the little neighborhoods surrounding the street. And as I was getting closer to my neighborhood, I saw this young girl with a crutch and her foot in a cast, limping along Venice Boulevard. And I thought, wow, you're brave. This is a form of extreme sports, in my opinion. If you're on crutches as a woman in, in Vegas, or not Vegas, in Venice, in Los Angeles, you're on crutches as a woman in Los Angeles. That's an extreme sport. You better watch out. You, you must be real confident. You must have Taekwondo under your belt. If you're confident walking down the street in crutches in Venice, because it is Call of Duty out there. It's that, what's that game with, with, with people, go, Grand Theft Auto. It's real. Grand Theft Auto is an actual occurrence in Los Angeles. And so I just thought, wow, this girl is brave. She was limping along. Because in the wild, a lion's gonna eat her, or a lioness because they're the ones that go hunting. And you wanna talk about how women aren't strong. Ask a lioness if she's strong or not. The male's just chilling back home with his mane that he's licking and keeping it all fluffy and fresh while the females are out there hunting on the Serengeti. So I just thought, wow, this girl is brave. So brave, she's brave. <laughs> and I, 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 cheers to her, I hope she made it. Maybe it would be a really great horror movie plot if it started Let's just, let's create the scene. Starts with a girl on her crutches, limping through a very dangerous neighborhood. You're like, what is this girl doing? She must be going home. She's like, she lives there. She feels safe there. But what she really is is a bait for predators. And she ends up using that as a bait and switch. So she just limps around the neighborhood and some guy sees her as a weak, easy prey and he snatches her up in, her, in his van and then she turns into a werewolf and mauls him to death. Jason Bloom, where are you? I think it's a great idea. Good thing I wrote my own horror movie. Soon to be in theaters. Maybe just a couple theaters. Maybe just my house and I'll call it a theater, but it's going to be out at some point. Let's do some absolutely nots. Absolutely not to the girl on the crutch. <laughs> but maybe an absolutely because I, I, I think it's pretty brave. Apple and Google and other tech companies have rolled out a growing slate of AI-powered tools to make life easier for people with disabilities. So now AI is gonna help people with disabilities. For instance, some apps can help blind users hail taxis, create matching outfits, or de determine if a carton of milk has expired. Are these necessities? A blind person can't hail a cab, they need an app. I would think using an app to hail a cab would be more difficult and complicated than just raising your hand. Just because they're blind doesn't mean they can't do this. A blind person is, is not completely disabled. Sure, they can't see, but I mean, judging by what I'm looking at in the streets out here, that might be an advantage. We've talked about that before. Maybe being blind is the new advantage in this wild world where a lot of what we're seeing is not the greatest, most beautiful thing we can look at. But blind people need help hailing a cab? The app seems to be more difficult. This just seems like Apple and Google and all these other tech companies are creating a way to make it sound like it's more of a necessity than it really is. Look, we're helping blind people. No, 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 AI is taking over. Let's not color it any other color than what it is. And picking out matching outfits. If I was a blind person, I would use the fact that I'm blind as a reason why I don't care what I look like. I'm gonna wear a yellow polka dot shirt, some wool slacks, one flip flop, one sneaker, a wide brim hat, an umbrella, and a belt that doesn't match and be like, I don't know, I'm blind. I'm not gonna try and make my outfits match. What does it matter? I can't see it. 
You think blind people care if their outfits match? Maybe they do. If you guys do, email me. I could be wrong. I could be projecting. Jesse May Peluso comedy at gmail.com. Email me. If you're blind, I'm genuinely curious. Is this something that would really help you? Do you have problems cr creating outfits? I just feel like these people are selling you short. Determine if a carton of milk has expired. Guess what does that? Your nose. Your nose does pretty good. Why do you think we have our nose? We're, we're, it's there to smell if stuff has gone rotten. And if you pour out the milk sometimes, guess what? There's chunks. Your eyes and your nose. You don't need the app. This is just another reason for AI to take over. And I'm not here for it. It scares me. I don't know what, if there's an equivalent from the generation prior to what would be as scary as AI in, in our society and in our world. Maybe the advent of cell phones might have been scary, but then again, it's like all, all these douchebags in their convertible BMWs had phones in their car, so they weren't scared about it. So I don't know what, what the equivalent is or what the equivalent was back in the day to the introduction of AI into our society today, but it freaks me out. And it's, girl, you're not tricking us. Don't use blind people to try and sell your scary robot. Absolutely not to all the tech companies. And blind people, tell me if you're listening, because I know you can listen, email me. Also, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe the page, like the video, hit thumbs up, rate the podcast. It helps us a bunch as well. Rate the podcast five stars. I would really appreciate it. And you also can call the pod. I know I mentioned emailing the pod. You can call the pod 513-916-0930. You can contest me. You can question me. You can give me some advice. Or if you have some advice you want me to help you with, maybe a guest you want to see on the podcast. And don't forget to subscribe to the Patreon for exclusive content. And also, guys, come see me live. All of my tours, my merch, any way that you guys support me goes towards, a portion of it goes towards the Alzheimer's Association and Hilarity for Charity. So thank you guys ahead of time for helping us out. Some more absolutely nots. I was reading my CNN Top 5. I like this little newsletter I get from CNN every day. It's just kind of like the top five news stories that they think I need to know. Most of them are about horrific political storms or actual weather storms so it's not, never anything good you have to dig down to find some good stuff but it said burl has weakened to a tropical depression but still threatens to produce catastrophic flooding tornadoes in the u.s as it moves inland burl has weakened to a tropical depression you mean to tell me that even the weather's depressed now there's no hope if the weather's depressed we got to throw some edibles up in the sky Edibles are the answer for everything. Or a nap. Maybe the weather needs a nap. The weather's doing too much. Doesn't it ever get exhausted? <laughs> Girl, sit down. Why are you doing so much? The weather's blowing and thrashing and smashing and ripping things out of the ground. Girl, why are you so mad? I get it. Yes, we've sort of contributed to your anger. I'm not going to gaslight you. I don't want to do that because you're way more powerful than me. But maybe just take a nap. Girl, chill. Here I am as a woman telling another woman to calm down. It's not a good move, but the weather freaks me out. So we need to do whatever we can to make her feel good. So maybe we should start walking everywhere and wearing Crocs because the weather has weakened to a tropical depression. We can't have her depressed. <laughs> Hell hath no fury like a depressed weather storm situation. Horna hornado. A hornado. <laughs> Hell hath no fury like a depressed hornado. Um, some more absolutely not. I spoke a little bit before our podcast had to stop because there was drilling about Super 73. I actually set up my bike. It took about a year to get it all set up. And it takes me a while to, to do things. I think because I like to do things in my mind, what I consider right. And I also take a while to make a decision. It's how I've always been. I'm overly considerate. So I wanted to get all the nuts and bolts tightened. They're probably too tight. I'll go over a bump and something's going to snap off, I'm sure. I, I cross my T's and dot my I's a little too much, and I could use a little loosening of the reins in life. And I think we all could loosen the, the reins of life a little bit, and that's one reason why I wanted to get a Super 73 to sort of get me out and, and adventure a little bit. And so I was really excited to take this puppy out on the road. And so there are bicycle traffic laws and when you ride along the coast in Los Angeles, there are lanes. Now, when you're in Venice, and Venice Boulevard, or not Venice Boulevard, but the boardwalk, that's what they call it, right? The Venice boardwalk, 
people are supposed to walk on the inside of the boardwalk where all the shops are, right? That's where the people walk. And then there's a bike lane on the outside in the sand. That is just for people on wheels, rollerbladers, you know, stepdads that are recently divorced and they bought a new pair of rollerblades and they're reliving their glory from the 70s and 80s, 90s. They're out there whipping around with their fanny packs. You've got tourists on bicycles with the hotel names on the back. You're definitely going to get followed and robbed. There's people roller skating, people on bikes, and then there's motherfuckers who are walking. So I get there needs to be order in everything. There has to be order in all parts of life. And so I know that. So I'm on the bike lane riding with my man. We're going all the way down from Venice. We went to Malibu. And we pass by. There's all these, like, really cute cafes. They're called Perry's Cafe. And it's all along the beach. And it's like a chain. But, you know, it's a quick little nosh if you're riding your bike a far distance. And so we see one. And we kind of pass it. So we have to get off of the bike path. And we turn off the bike path. And there's literally, like, 20 feet where people are supposed to be walking where we were on our bikes. And and I wasn't riding the bike because it was such a short distance. I just was like, you know, when you walk your bike, you're sitting on it and you're walking it. So I'm sitting on it and I'm walking it. And these two women come from the restaurant and the woman goes, uh, <laughs> you know, you need to stay over there. And I looked at her in my mind. I'm like, ma'am, ma'am, no. And I don't know if you know me, but I don't like ma'am. Ma'am's not a, a phrase we need to say to anyone ever. So if I'm giving you a ma'am, you did something to deserve it. But I kept it in my mind because I'm working on my Sicilian rage. I'm working on processing the Sicilian rage through my brain and my mouth and letting it stop somewhere in my nose so that what comes out of my mouth isn't really how I feel. <laughs> it's a real practice, okay? And so she's like, you need to stay over there. And I go, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I decided to do. Be completely passive aggressive. Oh, over there? Is that where I should be? You should be six feet under by now, lady. You've taken up enough oxygen. My mom's dead and you're alive? Well, she wasn't a bitch. Only after she had a couple glasses of wine and it was cute because she was like 90 pounds. So whenever she got angry, it's like a little chihuahua. You're like, look at that. Look at that little lady getting upset. But I just thought like, man... There's something about older white women who love to tell people what to do. And I don't like to make it about anything. You know how I am. I'm, I'm like in the middle. I, I'm not too much of a disruptor. That's hilarious. I'm definitely a challenger. I'm a challenging person. But I don't like to like, I'm not a sexist. I'm not an ageist. I don't like to make it about black and white. But as a white woman, I got to say a lot of you older white women love to tell people what to do. And guess what? Collectively, no one gives a fuck. No one wants to hear it. Because your opinion doesn't really matter, especially if you're going to be rude about it. How do you know how long my day was? Why don't you be a little considerate and learn how to say things? You've lived a long life. You don't have another way you could tell me what you think I need to do and how I think I need to do it? Oh, I just cracked my neck. That felt good. So to those older white women, I say, absolutely not. I hope you fall into a pile of sand and it lands in your mouth. That was mean. That's somebody's grandmother. But check your grandma. Check her. We got a couple other ones. Oh, my God. Jojo Siwa. <gasps> Jojo, see what's happening. What is going on? I don't know what she's evolving into. Jojo Siwa is an enigma. It is a human train wreck that we're watching. And I don't like to make fun of anyone's journey because we have to be real. When you grow up on YouTube, we all know that doesn't create a well-balanced human being. This girl created a persona and grew up in front of everyone. I don't think that's normal. I also don't think it's healthy for a kid. I don't think it's good developmentally. Obviously, this girl is thrashing and crashing. She's like her own weather system that is just storm after storm, and she's trying to find herself, and she's finding herself based off of what she thinks fans want instead of probably what she really feels or who she really feels she is, and I feel for her. But, I mean, I have to blame the people. Didn't you guys make JoJo Siwa famous? Didn't you guys do this? You did this to us. So th she was in the news because she was doing a concert, right? She was doing a concert and somebody yelled out to her. And I feel for her because, you know, when you're an artist and you're putting yourself out there, whatever, doing a show, whatever it is, that requires a level of humility and it requires a level of, I don't know, just having some sort of fortitude about yourself and having a level of I don't care what people think. But also there is a level of you being like, well, I hope they like me. So it's a weird balance. So she's on stage 
and someone booed her. Someone booed her while she was performing, which uh, I don't think that should be a part of the performance. Honestly, keep it to yourself. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer. You don't have nothing nice to say. Don't say it. That's what I say to the Sicilian rager in my head sometimes. Don't say it. We don't need to hear it. To boo someone who's put herself out there after all these years is rude. And so she said respectfully, fuck you. And I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that response. I did the same thing to Zach Pretzelsticks, who interrupted my show. <laughs> Zach Pretzel, Pretzelbag. What was his name? Zach, Zach Zucker. Zach Zucker. Sounds like a son of a dentist. But the YouTube, I feel like the modern YouTube celebrity is the equivalent of the Frankenstein monster. You guys created her. And so if you're going to go see her, don't boo her. Let's see you do something. Because it's not easy to put yourself out there. Well, actually, it literally is so easy to put yourself out there now. It's the easiest thing anyone can do. But to have the fortitude, tenacity, and stay with all to keep it going, uh, not a lot of us can do that. So to her, I say congratulations. To the rest of the world who created her, I say you did this to us. So JoJo Siwa is because of you guys. So I blame you. I say absolutely not to the people who created her. No, this girl needs a nap. Everyone needs a nap. We all need to stop and slow down. The weather, Jojo Siwa. There's another, I don't know if I'll consider this an absolutely not, but Oprah, 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 Oprah Winfrey is in the news. She's looking back at the time when she was body shamed by Joan Rivers on national television. Why this is news is beyond me, but I've always been intrigued by Oprah and her power. And I've obviously, Joan Rivers to me was one of the greatest, still will be one of the greatest comedians, regardless of male or female that is living or dead. But before I even read this, are we now gonna start to posthumously cancel people? Because I won't be on board if we're trying to cancel Joan Rivers. Oprah is rich enough for this not to hurt. Someone made fun of you because you were kind of fat. Guess what? You're rich. You have your own show. Let it go. Laugh out your way all the way to the bank and then go to the taco drive through wherever you got to go to make yourself feel good. Did she not know what den she was entering when she went on the show with Joan Rivers? You have to do your research. This is what I do. Not that I'm comparing myself to Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say her name. I feel like Biden right now. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. Like, I'm not comparing myself to her, to, uh, to Ellen or Joan Rivers or any female comedian. But if you go on a show, you have to do your research of who's interviewing you. It's not just about you being interviewed. You need to know what den you're entering. And so she entered Joan Rivers' den. Joan Rivers makes fun of everyone. I mean everyone. The disabled, the Kardashians, those are the same thing. Actually, disabled people are, are much more well off than the Kardashians. Do your research if you get interviewed. You got to know what den you're entering. You better be up on the host who's asking you questions. So Oboe Winfrey said, <laughs> I've been shamed on The Tonight Show by Joan Rivers. I had my first appearance on The Tonight Show, and she was adding that they were supposed to be discussing the success of her Chicago-based talk show. And Joan Rivers said, I'll let you come back if you lose 15 pounds. You need to lose 15 pounds. She said that to me on national television, Oprah recalled. And I accept it. I accept that I should be shamed because how dare me be sitting up there on The Tonight Show. Of course, I didn't lose the 15 pounds. I went on and ate my way to another 10 pounds. Oh, I don't know what I can say to that. Should Joan Rivers be coming outright and say you need to lose 15 pounds? No, but this was so long ago. Our standards have completely changed. We have to consider everyone's emotions now. And we have to consider how everybody feels. And no one can be real. We can't be real because of how people are going to feel. Yes, how you deliver the package is important. But you were on Joan Rivers' show. Uh, I think it's ironic that Oprah gained success basically from keeping it real on her show. And then she went on Joan Rivers' show and then got mad that Joan Rivers kept it real with her. So you can dish it, but you can't take it. And Weight Watchers? But you're taking Ozempic? Opie? ruh -roh. That seems a little complicated. She had a whole bunch of controversy. And it seems like maybe she's trying to use this story to cover up the fact that she's a big, fat liar. I think Oprah is a big, fat liar. I'm not going to call her fat, but I think she's a big, fat liar. Because she said she was on Weight Watchers. And turns out she's taken... 
the most famous weight loss drug that is very controversial right now, Ozempic. We're not talking about that. It's always about what people aren't talking about. That's the news. It's not Joan Rivers. Oprah's just trying to deny. She's trying to deny. Well, that's mean, but Oprah is one of the richest persons on the planet, so she'll figure it out. To her bank account, I say absolutely not. That's why I say, Oprah. There's nothing, there, by the way, it probably looks like I'm drinking alcohol. It's coffee and, and maca root. There was an interesting article about pet travel. You know, I'm always looking for ways to travel with my pets. If I could put them in my womb, I would. I can't do that because apparently that's not nice or respectful, which, like, let me live my life. Honestly, let me live my life. Let me do what I need to do to feel happy with my pets. And if I want to travel with them, I'm going to travel with them. But there was this news article about this guy who basically, let me see if I can find it here. When Yorkies, when Yorkie poos fly, it was on the New Yorker. The New Yorker's got a lot of fun little articles about different things. This is by some guy named Adam Isco. Bark Air, a new airline catering to people with pups for $6,000 a ride. It just took its inaugural flight. No charge for the wee-wee pads and hunks of pork. Well, I hope not. Six thousand dollars a flight and then i thought damn now even having a pet is luxury what's happening in the world matt meeker a serial entrepreneur in 2002 co-funded meetup the new york um ho online hobbyist website he saw a problem in need of a solution earlier this year he started up bark air which marks itself as a hundred percent total real airline for dogs I think when only rich people can afford it, it's a problem. Now we have entitled people and entitled dogs. Don't make me hate your dog because of you. Because I love dogs more than people. That's clear. It's obvious. Don't make me not like your dog because you've created an entitled dog. It's so rude. The flight manifest. This is so funny. So these are the dogs who took the inaugural flight. Eddie was a golden retriever from Wyoming. Brooklyn was a Dot Chown Pomeranian from Texas. Poppy was a whitehead chihuahua, terrified. <laughs> and Tola was a prog ratter and a frequent flyer. I've never heard of a prog ratter. Skyler was an elderly Sharpe who was apparently stuck in traffic. So even dogs don't make their flight. Already I can't stand these dogs. Even when dogs <sighs> become assholes, I can't. We can't have dogs become assholes. I wonder when Skylar arrived late if they were like, no, bad dog. You can, no, 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 no. You were late. You must be on time. I need receipts. I need to see the receipts of all of this. I need the receipts of the manifest. Bark Air is a lot like Delta or United, except that it, instead of uh, Air Marshal, there's an onboard veterinary tech who is trained in doggy CPR. Tell me this person. Person? The 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 the, 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 the cat to take over the microphone. Did you hear me? The, this person. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that this person that does CPR is doing CPR on an open mouth of a dog. Because I love my dog, but I don't know if I could give Carlin CPR. I see what he's, he licks all day long, and it's not cute. A ticket to Los Angeles runs $6,000 for the human and the pooch. To bring the prices down, Meeker is in talks of purchasing a Boeing 747 from an Israeli man who is moving some jets. No. <laughs> no. What does that mean, moving some jets? There's too many Ozark deals happening in industries that shouldn't have any corners cut. Airline, flights, planes, that needs to be a very strategic procedural procedure. The way, however they're selling them or moving them, it can't be through some just some guy. Oh, I got a guy. He's got a Boeing 747. That sounds so shady. It sounds like when my dad would get rid of one used car and be like, it's okay. My guy Tony down the street's got another Buick. No. I don't want Tony's Buick. Do the brakes work? The brakes never worked. You get the cars from these guys and th things would be missing. It'd be three wheels. And Boeing? I don't want to spread rumors, but rut row. Boeing ain't going. We already know. I'd rather get one of those paper planes that we shoot around in high school during the class when Miss Imborski's turned around writing on the on the chalkboard that I, I feel more safe flying in one of those than a Boeing right now Meeker dreams of retrofitting the interior with two dog runs and enough lie flat beds for 77 pups he also runs the airline's publicly traded parent company 
Bark, which has hired designers from Lego and Nickelodeon to create bespoke toys and treats and has hosted an outdoor music festival for dogs. This guy just sounds rich and lonely. I love him. I love that he loves dogs. I think this is a very fun thing. Make it affordable. Why does everyone have to become so rich? And look, I know everything's expensive and prices are higher than they've ever been, even though they just lowered, you know, they just said that like consumer products now have lowered a point tenth of a percent or whatever today and that that looks hopeful for inflation. It doesn't really look hopeful. I'm not good at math, but the math isn't mathing if they think that that's enough of a percent to make everybody feel good. But this guy's creating bespoke toys and treats. We don't need bespoke toys and treats. We just need cheaper health care. <laughs> I just want to be able to bring my dog across the country and not need to take out a loan for it. <sighs> I'm going to need some more maca. I really do actually enjoy maca root. I don't know if anyone out there has had fluctuating mood, you know, any sort of hormonal fluctuations, but maca, maca's magical. There's a lot of conflicting information on the internet. It can be very stressful to sort of sort through what's healthy, what works, what doesn't work. There's a lot of snake oil salesmen now. There's the cure-all drops and the cream that you need, the best cream. If anything says that it cures something or it's the best of something, don't trust it. You just have to listen to your body a little bit, and that can be hard because there's so much noise in the world. But I'm someone who has used maca on and off for years, and when I use it, I notice a difference. And you're probably like, well, why don't you just use it every day? I, I, there's so many things to remember. So I don't always remember to use it. It's one of those things I'd have to lay everything out that I want to put in my body in order for me to remember to put it in my body. Funny, I never forget to put pizza in there. Maybe I should just put maca on my pizza and then I get it every day. But find yourself a good gelatinized maca root. That's my little, and allegedly, I'm not your doctor. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if there could be health problems. There could be health problems with anything. But for me, I enjoy it. I probably put a little too much in the coffee today. Good luck, Mika, with bark air. It should be cheaper. That's all I'm saying. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we get before I, I lose you guys, because we're just doing a cute little episode today. Did we talk? We talked about Baja Fresh before, Deb, right? About when I was. In, OK, so I went to Baja Fresh. They had their tortas come back. They reinvented the torta a little bit. I'm a little mad about it, but at least they brought it back. I'm here for change and having something evolve. I'm okay with that. I'm okay if tortas on her personal growth journey because I'm going to go along with it, even though I don't always agree, like, girl, you're not doing it right, but okay. So I went to I went to Baja Fresh, and I got excited, and then they slid in my DMs, and then they said they were going to email me. Remember that? And then when I checked and I didn't see the email yet, they said the email. Sarah from Baja Fresh sent me a gift card. Your gift card has arrived. To access your e-gift, please, please click on the Get It Now button and follow the instructions. So they sent me a gift card, and they sent me a gift card. It says, enjoy the holiday weekend. Food is on us, because this was around the 4th. And I thought, this is so amazing. And not that I don't need it. I want to pay it forward. I get so many fun things. I get, I'm so fortunate for the amount of things that people give me and that people share with me for the podcast or for whatever. I feel really, really grateful for all the amazing things that I get to try out. And, and a lot of people just gift me things. So I want to gift this to somebody. I want somebody who deserves it. I want you guys to send me messages about somebody who you think would enjoy $80 from Baja Fresh. I mean, that's a, you could feed a family right there or a really hungry Oprah for lunch. <laughs> so send me an email, DM me, message me somehow to let me know if there's somebody in your life who you think could really benefit from a free lunch at Baja Fresh. It's 80 bucks, lunch, dinner, breakfast, whatever they want. Send me an email. Tell me why. We're going to pick our favorites. I'm also going to post this on all my socials this weekend. And if you guys want to email me, jessiemaypulisocomedy at gmail.com. You can also respond in the comments below this video. And you can also give us a text message, 513-916-0930. And we'll look through everybody. And I'll pick my favorite. I'll pick a winner to enjoy Baja Fresh on me and Baja Fresh. Because I'm fortunate in my life and I want to share this. So I feel like I want to give this away. And um, at the beginning of the podcast, oh, wait, before we get into what Barcelona did to its tourists, 
something happened in Disneyland with Goofy. Goofy's my favorite character from Disneyland, Disney World, Disney in general. I, I just lo love Goofy, I think, because I've always been Goofy. So I think as a kid, you identify with whatever character. So on puberty, a woman is suing Disney, claiming she suffered severe injuries when Goofy fell on her. <laughs> But I mean, he's goofy. What not that what he's supposed to do? Katrina Griffin alleges that while she was bending over to tie her daughter's shoes, Goofy walked into her, causing her to fall onto the cement. The lawsuit filed in March named Disneyland Resort and the individuals in the Goofy costume and their handler. Griffin seeks damages for negligence, health care bills, and loss of earnings. With a case management conference set for September 4th, this isn't the only legal ac action against Disney this year. In March, maintenance workers at its Southern California hotels accuse a company of underpaying them. People can sue anybody. And everyone's so sue happy. And let's read some of these comments. Someone says ridiculous anything for a buck. Someone says a Karen. Oh, please, people are so happy. How hurt was she? Maybe embarrassed. She will never win this. Knowing how people are at these big theme parks, she probably stopped to tie the shoe in the most inconvenient spot, blocking everyone's walk path. I see this all the time. It's so annoying. Bro, step to the side and out of everyone's way. Sounds like she's already a fat ass, out of shape woman, too, falling such a short distance and hurting herself. I can just hear Goofy. Oh, gosh, didn't see you there. My apologies in a goofy voice, of course. This is why sometimes you just got to read the comments. I hadn't read the comments, but I think that's so funny. Oh, I, oh gosh, didn't see you there. I don't even know what Goofy's voice is. I can't think of is Is it is that Mickey Mouse or is Goofy high pitched, too? They all sound the same. It is ridiculous. How far are you falling, boo? Look, I know it's tough as a mom. I know Disney's probably overwhelming and so expensive. Here's a little hack. Have your kid throw up and they'll give you a bunch of free stuff. You didn't hear it from me, but I know a few people have done that. Life is difficult. Juggling children is, I can't even imagine how difficult, but girl, if you're hurting yourself falling two feet, it ain't Goofy's fault. It ain't Goofy's fault. Okay, you gotta figure out how to, how to, survive if you can't tie your shoe with your daughter you're not gonna make it out in these streets you gotta learn from the girl on the crutches in venice she'll teach you a thing or two she'll teach you a thing or two about surviving and i was talking earlier about creating joy and laughing because i'm like oh god life is so chaotic it sounds so simplistic to just say that but i really do believe in creating joy even in this instance where i'm talking about some woman hurting herself in disney we have to we got to find joy where we can it's really the way to manufacture happiness whenever you need it. It's, it's right at the tip of your fingers. And it's the only way I think to realize that you have control over your life is to create joy for yourself. And that's why I was like, oh, you know what? I got this cute little mug, this simple little mug from Marshalls. It brings joy to my heart because there's so many smiley faces on it. It's like these little, little cheerleaders that we need. And sometimes you have to create your own cheerleading squad for yourself to get you through the difficult times. So I hope you guys can create joy for yourselves out there this weekend and protect your neck at Disney World. You never know who's coming up behind you.